morning all, Brett from Limestone Permaculture. Most of you guys have issues with pests and wildlife coming through your gardens. I hear it all the time. I thought I'd spend a little bit of time having a quick look through our farm and showing you guys some of our protective systems, our, our protective management setups, um, starting from our tunnels down through to our espalier systems. And so we'll start with the biggest, and this is the hybrid shade house, and let's have a little look what's going on here. So the hybrid shade house is a protective system. It's the biggest one we've got on the farm. It has a 50% shade cloth, uh, which does keep out all your wing critters, even right down to your fruit fly. Uh, it also has fixed sides, so it is providing a stability into this area, creating a subtropical microclimate. But the important part about this whole system is, again, it protects us organically without having to use any kinds of sprays or chemicals or whatnot it protects the things that you have inside that system to be able to get maximum yield for the least amount of effort and especially without harming nature these tunnels are exclusion netted systems that is designed to exclude all your pests, uh, your typically your fruit fly, your cabbage moth, your birds, your bats. They do a little bit to hold out uh, ground-borne animals like rats and, and uh, bandicoots, but essentially it's for winged critters. Now these systems are low maintenance and they're low cost. The thing to remember with these tunnels, guys, is that the tunnel is actually designed first and your garden is designed to fit within it. The reason that is the case is because the netting is a certain width. So you design your tunnel to meet the width of the net so you don't need to cut and don't have any waste. The other part to remember is the height of a screen door. So the tunnel height is determined by the height of the door. This is why we always build our tunnels to a certain size based on those parameters and then we build the gardens to suit within. Another espalier system, guys. This is in a narrow bed. You can imagine this could even be on your driveway. This little system here is tucked in in front of one of our tunnel systems. So we've got access to the front, which means that when we, un when we roll and unroll the net, we only do it with the front part of the net. The back part of the net always stays down because we can't get to it to roll it up. And that's okay. You only need the front side exposed. And being exposed, on that front side allows for bee pollination to happen. And then again, once it goes to fruit set, the nets roll back down, the front net rolls back down, rolls up the bottom, clamps like you can see here and makes it a sealed unit. These tunnels are a smaller version of the walk-in tunnel. Obviously you can't walk into these guys, but what I love about this is that it fits onto one bed the height has been set so we can actually grow a decent sized tomato in there but then that also allows for other plants so through winter it could be kale and various brassicas this netting uh, is a fruit fly exclusion netting sometimes it's known as veg net and sometimes it's known as just purely fruit fly exclusion net you can purchase it uh, from a couple of different companies from around australia uh, the main thing for this netting is that you're looking to exclude the smallest possible wing critter, which in our case is the fruit fly. Uh, from that point on, it actually excludes every larger wing critter. So this will keep your birds, this will keep your chooks out, it'll keep your bats out. It is amazing stuff. It has a fairly good lifespan on it. I mean, at the moment, we've got nets on our property that are now sort of hitting that 12 and 13 year old stage. Um, but, you know, potentially you could get 15, 20 years if you look after them. Construction is relatively simple. It's just a post in the ground. Now that could be a timber peg, it could be a metal peg, poly pipe, you know, something in the realms of 32 mil, 40 mil, just flexed around, sitting down onto the pipe. It can be screwed onto it. It also acts as a uh, a post that you can actually screw the sides of your bed to as well so you can actually make the whole thing as one it's a very simple construction and again low maintenance and again low cost a smaller version of what we've been looking at guys 
this little tunnel set up here is perfect for just doing modular work in amongst your garden beds. So on this occasion, we've got these down to start small corn seedlings and also for casting seed. One of the biggest problems we have is rats and birds come in and literally take the seed out of the ground. So we find that starting our corn as seedlings, putting them under net and also casting our seed in and having this system available at least gives us a decent chance to get them up to a certain size and then we can pull the nets off and they can continue to grow. Even crossing over your hoops to make a small enclosure that can then allow you to grow in between some of your perennial and semi-perennial or biennial plants and that allows you to get things like lettuce and radish in, into place that normally would have an issue again with something like our birds and you know rats and bandicoots that come into this place. So this just gives a little bit more protection and a bit more chance to actually make it happen. So even at a micro level, we can use something like a glass cloche just to protect one individual plant. In this case, it's just a little capsicum getting a fresh start. And this system here, again, just excludes any issues that you might get, especially from ground loving animals. And at some point you do need to take that off to let the plant continue on, but it gets it through its infancy stage or its young stage. The next form of protective systems that we have on the farm, guys, is we have a whole range of espalier systems. This espalier system is on a terraced area, but we have espaliers on swales, we have espaliers integrated into our standard veg gardens, espaliers on um, fence lines, uh, freestanding espaliers in amongst you know, forest garden systems. So there's no end to the possibilities that you can use with the espalier systems. But what's important about them is that you get to train a fruit tree into a certain space and protect them with the nets that never come, never really come off the line. So they only come down and they go up. So obviously in winter, they're rolled up and allows you to grow veg like snow peas and snap peas. And in summer, once you get fruit set, the nets come down and they roll up at the bottom and clamp. And that also helps with rats and bandicoots. So we find this is one of our best systems. And at the moment, we've got a young apricot here, a Travat apricot. But you can see in amongst it, while we're letting this grow, that we've got veg. So the beds never stay dormant. You've always got something happening in your beds. Spalier system is in amongst some of our more free range fruit and nut trees down on our swales. What's special about this guy is that if you look at the trunks, they're a fairly mature tree and at one point they were, they were at their full canopy we weren't getting any fruit back from them. Basically, even if we tried to net uh, just the fruit themselves off the branches, the bats, the birds, everything was still trying to get into them. So what we did was actually bring this tree back down into an espalier system. So you might think you're not getting as much, but when you're getting nothing and you're potentially getting 100% of the area you net, then you're in front. Another example of a espalier system and with young fruit trees just kicking off and, and obviously these branches will be trained at a later date but again while this system is actually just in preparation for the fruit trees you get so many years of being able to grow like perfectly good veg underneath and the main thing you need to remember when you're growing veg underneath an espalier system is that you're working around tree roots young tree roots so the important part there is to grow vegetables that are non-disruptable. So you don't want to grow potatoes where you're going to be digging the ground around them. Try and grow vegetables that won't disrupt the, the young life of these trees. And yet another example of an espalier system, guys. This is our plum alley. Um, plums grow in a fan or train them in a fan shape. Uh, that's the way they produce the, the better fruit. With the fan, effect and it means that you can grow them not just as a fan along the espalier but you can grow them a fan across which means that we've actually created a netting system that looks a bit like a kite and it allows the fruit production to happen along and off the either side of the width so these guys here are all japanese low chill plums the netting is rolled up onto this wire edge during its dormancy period and throughout its flowering period 
and then you simply just drop the nets as soon as you see the small fruit start to come on. So we call them marbles. But basically, when you see those marbles, the net drops down, rolls up at the bottom, pegs, and you've got a sealed unit um, that will protect that fruit until harvest period. For our urban homesteaders, just have a look at how narrow this espalier and garden bed system is. It's a perfect little setup for those confined spaces and tight yards. It's still a fenced espalier system where you're going to get the, the same kind of fruit as you get anywhere else, but your beds are a little bit more narrow. They've got to be a little bit deeper to hold the soil for the root system, but this should be able to fit just about anywhere. It still has the netting exclusion area at the top, so that can just roll down over the front. There's no netting on the back because there's a fence, and it just comes down and clips to the bottom, and it just prevents most of the uh, unwanted wing critters from taking over your fruit. Perfect. This is just an insight, guys. Hopefully it helps you with thinking about some of the potential of the protective systems you could use around your property. Uh, there is so many other options and so many various ways you can actually construct these things. But what I love most is it works on the premise of exclusion, which means that you're not actually harming anything and you're just working out what goes within those systems. Thanks for watching, guys, and please check out our website, limestonepermaculture.com, and we'll see you next time.